Welcome to Deep Dive Defense. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. In today's video, we will check whether the new Russian 5th generation fighter, the Sukhoi 57 Felon, represents a future option for the Iranian Air Force, or if the Sukhoi 35 Superflanker currently on order, is adequate for Iran's near-term air power requirements. To make this comparison, we must analyze the advantages the Sukhoi 57 possesses over the Su-35 and determine whether these advantages are worth it for the specific needs of the Iranian Air Force. Like and subscribe if you want to support the channel in the algorithm. Now let's start. The fundamental advantages of the Su-57 over the Superflanker are its low observable stealth characteristics, its internal weapons bay, and its more modern, active electronically scanned array radar system. Regarding kinematics of Iran's already ordered Su-35, specifically range, flight speed, acceleration, and maximum operational altitude, the upgrades implemented on the Su-27 to create the Sukhoi-35 were primarily focused on such kinematic improvements. It is important to understand that the over 40-year-old aerodynamic design of the original Su-27 flanker is a highly optimized one which remains near the optimum for its intended operational regime and mission profile. The area in which the Sukhoi-35 excels, namely its highly refined aerodynamics, is also a characteristic of the newer Sukhoi-57, which features a very flat optimized shape and high lift. This is in contrast to some other fifth-generation fighters that are aerodynamically bulkier. One key kinematic advantages the Su-57 offers over the Su-35 stem from its integrated internal weapons bay, which not only conceals the radar signature that externally carried weapons would create, but also reduces the overall parasitic drag that weapons on pylons cause during flight. Consequently, on very long-range missions, the Sukhoi-57 Felon can cruise more efficiently, thereby granting the fighter jet a greater reach and what is probably the largest combat radius of any fifth-generation fighter jet, a feature very suitable for Russia's vast territorial size. Iran is also a large country, but it is questionable whether the Su-57's longer range can be as effectively utilized when compared to the already exceptionally large combat radius of the Sukhoi-35. A key positive point for the Sukhoi-57 Felon is that it is a fighter which does not sacrifice aerodynamics and kinematics to achieve a more and more irrelevant improvement in low observability. Furthermore, the stealth design it incorporates does not significantly increase the aircraft's costs compared to non-stealth fighters like the Su-35. The Su-57 is a significantly more advanced fighter platform with features such as its four ESA radars, which provide it with a unique 360-degree coverage. The Superflanker, however, can at least utilize its high off bore sight gimbaled Urbis radar to enable coverage to the sides and provide mid-course missile updates towards the rear hemisphere. In this context, one crucial point must not be misunderstood. In a one-on-one -on -one engagement between a fifth-generation Sukhoi-57 and a fourth-generation Plus Plus Su-35, the Superflanker would almost certainly be defeated. The Felon would achieve superior F-pole launch parameters for first look, first kill, specifically a faster launch speed when armed with air-to-air -air missiles. Adding to that, the maximum operational altitude of 18.8 kilometers compared to the Superflanker's 18 kilometers would be even more critical. While the total difference in these conditions for missile launch may be less than 10%, even a marginal advantage of this nature can determine which of the two fighters is able to launch its missile first. Ultimately, it was the F-Pole first look, first kill parameters, and the superior range of the air-to-air -air missiles that decided the air-to-air -air kill of Pakistani J-10 over Indian Rafale in the engagement of 2025. For Iran's situation and its Su-35 on order, only the US F-22 could present a serious challenge in F-Pole parameters. On the long term, the acquisition of the Sukhoi-57 and more so the upgraded, re-engined Su-57M with its 177, 16-ton thrust, fifth-generation turbofan engines, will give the platform vast growth potential. This new variant makes good sense, especially for Russia and its vast territory, and for controlling drones on expeditionary missions. The next advantage the Su-57 has over the Su-35 is its stealth design and treatment, 
which significantly reduces its radar cross-section in the X-band, the primary radar band used by fighter jets around the world. As a result, it presents a significantly smaller radar signature on the screens of adversary fighter jets that are scanning the airspace with their radars. In this field, when compared to other fifth-generation fighter designs, the Su-57 clearly assigned the highest importance to its aerodynamic performance, rather than sacrificing it for a lower observable design. This indicates that the designers of this fighter jet opted for a balanced design philosophy, reasoning that counter-stealth radar systems and other sensors of the near future will erode the advantage of stealth features. An emphasis on stealth instead of aerodynamics could otherwise severely handicap a fighter design over its decades-long operational lifetime, as stealth loses its edge. This process has already greatly advanced and has diminished the stealth advantage when compared to the 1980s to the 2000s, and when it first appeared operationally in the form of the US F-117 Nighthawk. Stealth techniques and design can be utilized effectively on expeditionary combat missions over oceans, where sensor coverage is relatively low. However, when combat missions occur relatively near the borders of the country operating a fighter like the Sukhoi-35, an advanced integrated air defense system and networked ground-based sensors such as radars and thermal cameras can provide the superflanker with situational awareness about the location of a fighter jet possessing X-band stealth features. This means that an aircraft like the Su-57 or F-35, when confronting a technologically advanced adversary, would likely be detected at standoff ranges, which would warn 4.5 plus plus generation fighters like the Su-35 of their presence, and allow them to specifically use their own sensors to detect and lock onto them. This principle also holds true for other fifth generation fighter designs, like the F-22 or the Chinese J-20. Consequently, in the role of an air defense fighter which conducts hit-and-run operations into the airspace of neighboring countries, as is the case for Iran and its Su-35s on order, it can rely on the ground-based integrated air defense system to provide standoff situational awareness against adversary low observable fighter jets. Hence, in summary, a fighter like the Sukhoi-57 or F-35 could not expect to remain undetected by all the different sensors which are fused within an integrated air defense system of an advanced opponent. Ground-based radars operating in the S-band and lower frequencies are essentially totally unaffected by radar-absorbing structures and materials. Even stealth shaping becomes significantly ineffective for designs like the F-35 and Sukhoi Su-57 when facing radars operating below the L-band. Therefore, an opponent would need to have its air defense capabilities degraded over a longer period to exploit the advantage that stealth offers for intruding into hostile airspace. For Iran's specific needs, the stealth advantage is rather unimportant because its ordered superflankers would utilize the support they receive from the integrated air defense system regarding the locations of the opponent's stealth fighters. They would then use these coarse coordinates to concentrate their own sensors toward those threats to achieve a lock. Ultimately, this means that the sensors of the integrated air defense system supported Su-35 would not be the limiting factor in an aerial engagement, but rather the weapon's range under the specific launch conditions. With the arrival of higher power gallium nitride-based transceiver modules in the fighter radars of Iran's adversaries, the advantage of the Su-57's stealth features, similar to other fifth-generation fighter jet designs optimized for the X-band radar spectrum, becomes negligible. This is because at combat ranges of around 100 kilometers, where air-to-air -air missiles can be used effectively, the distance is already close enough for advanced radars to detect a fifth-generation stealth fighter. This occurs because the detection range is not proportional to the radar's performance in a linear manner. Below a certain threshold range, the reduction in radar signature necessary to remain undetected becomes an infeasibly low requirement and detection becomes a certainty. To illustrate this dynamic, consider an advanced fifth-generation fighter, like the latest Chinese J-20 variants. With its large aperture size radar believed to use high-power gallium nitride transceiver modules, such an aircraft is likely to detect a highly stealthy adversary fighter with a radar cross-section of 0.0001 square meters at ranges beyond 100 kilometers. This detection range is significant as it also represents the typical maximum engagement range for advanced air-to-air -air missiles, like the AIM-120 AMRAAM. 
the mentioned radar signature is so small that literally a revolutionary breakthrough in physics would be necessary to further reduce a fighter jet size target signature to below that limit of 0.0001 square meters in the X-band spectrum. And this situation will only improve for the radar side in the future. All these explanations concerning stealth and radars lead to the conclusion that the stealth shaping and stealth design of the Sukhoi 57 would not offer a significant advantage for Iran's specific case. In conclusion, it can be said that the advantages of the Sukhoi 57 over the Su-35 may not be worthwhile for Iran's requirements. The added range due to improved kinematics, its powerful engines, and its internal weapon bay are not of great advantage because the Superflanker already offers a fifth-generation kinematic profile in terms of range, operational altitude, supercruise, and maximum speed for Iran's territorial size. There is a detailed two-part video series on the Sukhoi 35 on this channel, linked above, where its method of air-to-air -air combat and unique features are explained. The Superflanker, equipped with its high-power Urbis passive electronically scanned array radar, could count on the support from Iran's integrated air defense system to provide it with standoff position data on adversary fifth-generation stealth fighters. If it can cue its radar or infrared search and track sensors towards a stealth fighter via the information received from the integrated air defense system, it can still perform long-range beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile launches at the maximum effective weapon range, and thus present itself as a deadly threat to the adversary. Hence. For Iran's primary operational conditions, both itself and the adversary would be aware of the positions of the involved fighters, and that even at standoff distances. The result is that the lower cost of the Sukhoi 35 is the greatest incentive to order this aircraft over the Sukhoi 57, even if Russia would be ready to deliver it. In fact, this is an approach that Russia itself is also taking for the time being. With the current production emphasis for high-end air superiority fighters for the Russian Air Force being on the Su-35 Superflanker. For Iran's specific requirements, the Sukhoi 35 may represent the optimal platform that can be currently acquired. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.